Give me a five by five on audio and if the chart is shown up clear. Just wait no no confirmation that audio is good. Thank you very much for that. All right, so you should be seeing a one minute chart of the E mini SP. March delivery contract for 2023. And right here, this candle right here. Okay. That candle, the closing price, we're going to annotate that. And then we're going to annotate the very next candle's opening price, which is here. What that's denoting is the distinction between where we closed for the one hour break and when we opened back up at six o'clock. So it's very little change. In fact, it's only one tick. So while it might not look that important it goes completely past most people's eyes but this is a new day, new day gap opening abbreviated by n d o g new week opening gap is where we have the difference between where we closed on the previous week's friday and the new sunday's opening new day opening gap is the difference between where we close at 5 p.m. New York local time and where we open at 6 p.m. New York local time. There may be a visual gap or difference between those two price points, something like this, where this is an actual liquidity void. We don't have that here. We see just the, the closing price and then the next opening is here. So it's little to unchanged, but it's by one tick difference. Going over here, you can see, look at the bodies are respecting it here. Look at the candle high here. Look at the low on that candle. A lot of sensitivity around there. Look at the close of this candle. Look at the open of this candle. Look at the high of this candle. Look at the high of that candle. Look at the high of that candle. The open and close on that candle. Lots of things occurring right there. So if you scrub forward, and I'm just going to just keep that level in the center of the chart so that we can see when we get to, we're only going to go to about four o'clock and then I'm going to close it. 
So here we are at new day opening gap. Okay, right in here. And the only thing I really highlighted here was the seven o'clock time where like if you're trading Forex, you can trade Forex around seven o'clock to nine o'clock in the morning, New York local time. If I suspect, this is where you're supposed to be taking notes. If I suspect that the market's going to be problematic for me, meaning that it's either going to be very hard to read, and I'm expecting that because of some news driver uh, that would come the next day or later in the afternoon, like FOMC, um, I will adopt the 7 o'clock to 8.30 time window if I want to trade pre-market. So before 8.30 news driver comes, if I see something that I want to participate in, and I think that the news driver at 8.30, what I mean by news driver, any kind of report data, um, some kind of uh, market medium impact or high impact news event that usually gets released around 8.30 New York local time. If I like the market structure that's in play at 7 o'clock going into 8.30, I have no fear of getting in a trade and using the 8.30 hour to roll right into my targets, which is what I showed this morning on Twitter. I went through the preamble of going through why I felt that the dollar index was likely to go higher, why I felt that the foreign currencies were likely to go lower, and ES would go lower. I said that Forex and, and the equities, like ES, would seek sell side, meaning my bias was bearish. I prompted you to take a look at your chart for new day opening gap. And for those individuals that are following on Twitter, all you have to do is go back to the time where I tweeted this morning asking if you've done what I've been teaching you to do, you would see the effects of price action here with the new day opening gap. Folks were, had already had it on their chart and they had been sharing it and they replied also with you know what they were showing. So this level here, that's the consequent encroachment of a previous new week opening gap. So right away, if you have just started following me, it's going to feel like, how can I keep up with this? And where do I start? Where do I begin? The easiest answer is this. Just show up every day. Okay, just show up every day and everything will start to make sense over time. Don't demand that it's going to happen for you right away. Don't expect to be able to take trades right away and understand why you're doing it. We're t I'm teaching you how to read price action on a different level. You're going to be looking at it algorithmically. If you don't think that the price is responding to that small little separation between where we close on Friday, I'm sorry, where we close on 5 p.m. and we open up, at 6 p.m., you're in denial. The market ran aggressively right to that. Look at the bodies. Did we wick above it? Yes. Did the body stop at the low of it? Yes. Did the body open at the high of it? Yes. Was there any candle in here that went beyond the new day opening gap? Just the wick, no body. The body tells the story. The wicks do the damage. Market breaks lower, and this is consequent encroachment of the previous week new week opening gap. NWOG is where we use the opening price on Sunday based on the difference between that and the previous week's Friday. They are static price levels. They're not hiding from you. They can't be manipulated after they've been given to you. Everyone sees the same price. It's not Forex where we don't have the same highs and lows. Everybody sees the exact same price. That's the advantage of trading futures. You can't be as manipulated as you would be if you were trading in Forex. For some of you that are kicking and screaming saying, I only want you to talk about Forex ICT. I've, I've come to learn about you as Forex. And now that I want to do it, you started talking about this. This is a better market. This is where I started. So when I took a step away from Forex, I went right back to my roots, which is this. That's why I told everybody before, if Forex ever became an issue, 
I know where I live. I can go right back to the commodity markets and futures, index futures, and bonds. Okay, so the things I'm teaching you when it comes to something like this, this is the same thing that you can apply to Forex. You can do the same thing with the price action and all the things, but I'm just teaching you very specific things that are directly related to this asset, to this particular market. It's advantageous for you to know these things because no one else knows them. No one else teaches it. How to use it, why it's implemented, what do we use it for, where's the advantage coming by knowing it. And once you have all those facets to this specific vehicle, index futures, it gives you a, there's no better, no better way of describing it is it's an insider's edge because you're looking at the market way beyond the normal scope of the average investor, the average trader, the average day trader. They don't have these tools. You have them now and everybody that's going to come to this channel and learn from me and on Twitter. You now have seen just in a week how influential these levels are because the algorithm itself, okay, it's repricing back to these levels. It's offering what? Fair value. What is fair value? Fair value is the opportunity for market participants to trade at a level where the algorithm is deeming it not favored enough for enough of a length of time. In other words, it did not trade between a specific price range enough for participants to have the opportunity to trade. Does that mean that the algorithm is being nice to you as a retail trader? Is it being nice to me because we speculate? No, it's not for you. It's for a different class of trader that you're not going to meet. They're not on social media trying to sell courses. They're not doing teaching circuits. They didn't work in a pit. They don't work at Joe Schmo's bank down the end of the street where they can get a mortgage. They don't work at Goldman Sachs. They don't work at UBS. It's a completely different group. Their tools, their reference points are absolutely outside the scope of normal analysis concepts. Yes, it's technical science. Yes, it's highly precise. Do you honestly think they're going to trade and risk billions of dollars on Mickey Mouse analysis concepts? Absolutely not. They don't have trend lines that's diagonal. They don't look at moving average crossovers. There's nothing harmonic. There's nothing Elliott Wave. There's no supply and demand. It's very specific, open, high, low, and close. That's it. And time. Time. When did this run occur? Going into what? The 7 o'clock hour. This whole run right here, right to that price point, set the stage for me to trust that I could find a setup before the 9.30 opening. And I had already anticipated that the 9.30 opening and throughout the session today would be lethargic, choppy, range bound. Can you trade in that? Absolutely, you can. I don't prefer to trade in those environments. Can I do it? Yes. Do I want to teach my students that are new to my analysis concepts and or speculation at all to trade in these environments? No. I teach you how to identify them and sit on your hands. It's important to know that because some of you still don't want to listen and you're complaining that you missed your trade based on what I was talking about today. By two seconds, you missed your trade, but good session otherwise. I can't like that comment on Twitter because what you're saying is you missed the opportunity to take a trade, which is exactly what I told you not to do. If you're trying to trade and follow along while I'm doing tape reading, you are going to get frustrated because you're going to be thinking I'm saying buy and sell when the only thing I'm teaching you is how to read and interpret what price is doing. In a couple months, you will be asked to push the button on your demo account. you got to wet, let that time and necessity for that part of this development come its way in the natural order of things. But right now, you don't know anything. You have no idea what I'm talking about. You have no idea where I'm going with the lectures. No idea whatsoever. 
you have to be conditioned to see the things that's going to be repeating over and over again. But I need you to understand that the risks are elevated right now. It's difficult right now. And if you're trying to be proficient as a trader and push yourself in these environments right now, the only thing you're asking is to make it harder than it needs to be. That's that's what you're doing. So I want you to just keep that in mind when we're going forward with this mentorship this year. When I'm doing the live sessions, I'm giving you my time so that way you can understand the difference between a high probability condition and a low probability condition. Both can be traded, but one has a much better characteristic that it's easy to get in. You can trust where it's going to go. It's immediate gratification. And it quickly gets to your targets, and you can wrap it up and go do, do whatever you want to do with the rest of the day. That's exactly what a trader would want to have. But because you're learning all this other retail stuff, you think that you know the lifestyle is you got to be chained in front of the, the charts all day. You don't. You don't want to have that. You want to get your money, wham, bam, thank you, man, out the door you go, and join back with the living. You go out and spend time with your family. So because I saw this this morning and it started to break down, I was watching the low of the previous week's new week opening gap. And again, I'm going to bring this down real quick. On your charts, you want to have 41, 46 even, 41, 34 and a quarter which is this level here. And the difference between those two levels, exactly 50% is this level right here, 41, 40 and a quarter. So when we ran up to new day opening gap here, which again is for your notes, the closing price at 5 p.m. and then the new opening price at 6 p.m., that hour gap that futures have every single day in the evening time in New York local time, that difference, whatever that range difference is, it could be several handles or it could be one tick just like this. You want to have that annotated on your chart throughout the day. It's a reference point that the algorithm will refer back to. And I'll teach you more about that later on as we go. But I'm, it's very easy for me to drown you with all these things and it's going to feel extremely complicated and some of you probably already feel like this is just too much give me a moving average crossover that's fine if that's how you want to look at it don't come back but if you really want to know how these markets book what makes them go up and down where they stop turn on a dime and why they do it you came to the right place because you're not going to learn this anywhere else but that new day opening gap it ran to that quickly would you agree that that was a real quick run up into that it's occurring at that 7 o'clock hour, New York local time. Your time on your trading view charts while you're with me learning. I don't care what platform you use. You can be using something else. Trade of 8, Ninja Trader, Trade Station, whatever. It doesn't matter. While you're learning, okay, while you're learning with me, you should be implementing trading view. Do everything you see me doing with TradingView. And yes, it might require you an additional step for transferring what you're doing here in TradingView with your trading platform. I leave that up to you. But it's essential that you do everything you see me and the rest of this group do with this one medium. That, that way you're never confused. Every candle identification that I present, you'll be able to track it immediately and see what it is that's going on in my commentary and on my analysis. So 7 o'clock in the morning to 8.30, if there's going to be a difficult time in trading, if I think that we're going to consolidate or we're in low probability conditions, that is the green light, okay, if you want a bat symbol, okay, the bat sign that goes up in the, the sky at nighttime, if you want the inside track, the, the little nudge from good old ICT, that means that I'm probably going to be taking something before 8.30. So... You were prompted this morning to look for sell side in futures and in Forex. You were prompted to look for higher prices in dollar. I gave you the bias. I gave you the, the premise of what I was looking for. After I gave that, I engaged and did my own executions. I looked for the market to move away from the new day opening gap, which it did. 
I waited for it to trade down to the low of the previous week's new week opening gap. If you don't know what I'm saying, just write down the questions you're having. And I promise you, if you go over to Twitter and you ask it, that our community will gladly share the answers with you to bring you up to speed. We're not a bunch of goobers that sit around and are, are selfish. We want everybody to do well, and we feed off each other's energy. I feed off your energy. So if you have questions, just go over to my Twitter feed, just tweet to me, and people will see it, and they'll respond to you accordingly. If they're an asshole, I'll block them. So if you look – give me one second. If you look at the, the move away from the new week opening gaps low, we had displacement to the downside. As the market moved away from this level, do I need to be up here to get short? No. Did I need to sell short here? No. How about this one here? I could have got institutional order flow entry there. Yep, could have. Didn't do it. How about here? I could have, I could have traded back into that. Yep, didn't do it. I waited. I wanted to see it trade back to this key level, which is the previous week's new week opening gap. Then I waited for what? Displacement. I want to see it move sharply away from it. Then, because it did that, what happens? We have a fair value gap right here. So that fair value gap and the last up close candle at the new week opening gap. Which order blocks do you use, ICT? You're learning. There's multiple things about this. It's not just the last up close candle before the drop. That's that's no. <laughs> that's not it. It's where you're at when that candle forms. And this new week opening gap, none of you are aware of it until I started teaching it. You're asking for the very specific video, okay? There will be a specific tutorial produced for it, but I want to show you it a few times. Because every time I put something out new, invariably someone's going to say, this is nonsense. This is cherry picked or whatever. I'm letting you handle this. You're putting your hands all over this, watching it live. It literally just gyrates right back to these levels all the time, but you weren't aware of it. So yeah, I'm giving you the chance to have a laboratory experiment on your own, play with the, the toys, okay, and discover how systematic and routine these things exist over the course of a day and over the course of a trading week. But when we're looking for order blocks, that change in the state of delivery, which is what an order block is, it's not the candle. It has absolutely nothing to do with the candle. It has nothing to do with that candle. It's the change in the state of delivery. The market changes the state of delivery right here. Once it starts delivering sell side and you have a fair value gap, your eye goes right back to that opening price. It's going to trade up into the fair value gap. That's where you want to try to take your entry. You allow for the price to trade up to that level because if it does, then you do another entry there as well. If you hold out the trade to the order block and don't put anything on inside the fair value gap, sometimes the order block will not be traded to. The fair value gap will be the only respected level, and then the market will run away without you. And that can be very frustrating because if you demand absolute to the tick precision for all of your executions, you will miss moves. The market sometimes simply will not move exactly where you want it to go. Or you'll be so picky about your entry, your limit order won't fill. And then it runs away. And then you have to use a lower, closer proximity entry to a price point that's lower than the key ideal entry points like this one here. So the market moves again. Small little movement into this candle's high. I like that. Added more. Go back and look at the Twitter example, okay, because I shared this. I recorded it. It's there, and you can see my execution, the whole business. And then we had this fair value gap that formed. What kind of fair value gap is this? SIBI, S-I-B-I, -I. sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. I noted real time. I removed it here for clarity. I wanted to see this remain open, and the market moved lower and attacked the sell side in here. All of this setting up for what? A move going into 8.30. The market consolidates going into the 8.30 hour, and I mentioned that we would see it drop aggressively, sharply, 
and into the 8.30 news hour. So the news event that came out. I don't even know what the data was. I couldn't tell you to save my life. If you offer me a billion dollars cash to tell you what the data said for that report, I couldn't tell you. I don't ever give a shit. I don't care. I just expect the volatility that comes in in the marketplace at that time. Once I know I'm looking for a run, then I'm expecting that 830 hour. If I know that the day that I'm about to trade is going to be a range bound consolidation day or just choppy, I'm going to be doing my work between 7 o'clock and 830. And once the 830 news driver that kicks in and runs to the liquidity I'm looking for and fills my order like you watch in the video I shared on Twitter, I'm done. I'm not going to worry about arm wrestling the market the rest of the day. I could care less what it does because my analysis was calling for what? A difficult trading market. So if I'm anticipating a difficult time, why not go in and get my money before everybody else goes into the party? I want to show up, eat the food when it's fresh, leave it. And everybody else comes here and gets the stale bread. And they're wondering why it doesn't taste good. They're working so hard for it. I'm getting in, getting out. That's what you want to do. If you don't want to trade like that, if you don't uh, learn how to participate in the marketplace like that, you know, you can do other things. Go trade somewhere else and learn somebody else's method. There's nothing wrong with that. There's other people that teach methods to make money. But the things that I do... I have to play my, I have to plug my laptop in here. I'm trying to teach you how to be more efficient with your time, more efficient with your risk. Because if you're going to assume risk, you might as well just do it when it's the best time to see markets moving, right? Do you want to just go in there because the trading hours are now active and everybody else showed up? Or do you want to be in there when it's really good. Get it and go. There's my executions. You can't do that with a market replay. So everything there, the logic and everything, you can watch me do that in the recording on Twitter. So then we have after 8.30, the market starts to bang around. Lots of chop and consolidation. And I called every one of these little turns in here and gave you my personal interpretation of every single candle. As it reached down into the lows, I explained to you that everything in here is just seeking new liquidity. There's no trade setups, none. Every time there was an imbalance, I said, now study this one, watch this one, and re-emphasizing that this is not a trade. This is not a setup. This is nothing. I would like to see this happen if I was watching price right now, but watch and see what it does. Do not take the trade. Why? Because I told you at the beginning of the session, it's going to be range bound because I took you to the daily chart and I told you we are inside of a large range. There's nothing definitive about where we're going next. So everything needs to be small little surgical strikes intraday. Hearing that, if you're not wanting to hear that, you're going to have selective hearing. And you're going to want to go in there and see something I'm talking about, and you're going to chase it because you want to make money. You want to pass your funded accounts. You want to get funded, or you want to fix your drawdown, and you're trying to use me to fix your drawdown. I'm not a genie in a bottle, okay? And I'm going to wear this part out a lot, and it's going to piss some of you off. But you're not going to learn if you do that. It's important that you have nothing at risk while you're watching the tape reading. If you do that, this is what I promise is going to happen for you. You're going to see your setup, the one that you understand easy. You will see it. You will know it's forming. And when I comment on it, it will confirm that you see it. And that confirmation over time will train your eye to see it forming. And then when I'm not doing these anymore at the end of the year, probably even before we get to that point, you'll be able to see it live in your charts without ICT making any reference to it. And that's exactly why I'm doing this. I'm not out here trying to be Mr. Right. I'm not trying to be the biggest YouTube streamer or the Mr. Popular. I'm trying to teach you the, the best way and the way I know works. 
if you come to me and you're expecting your way of doing it, having it your way mentorship, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. I promise you that's not going to happen. You might be able to chase a move that I might call out, and you think that's learning how to trade. The only thing you did was copycat. I'm not teaching you to copycat me or anyone else. I want you to be independent. So when we are looking at these lows down here, I will counsel you to look at the dollar index. Okay, and I'll, I'll pull it up in a second. But for now, we are watching these lows, and I was watching the relationship between these lows between the NASDAQ's lows and the Dow Jones futures contract lows. And there was eventually a, a divergence between those three averages. And then they all eventually went lower. So all of them agreed on that lower low here. But the dollar index did not. These were all real-time analysis points that I was calling out. I said, okay, now even though we have a lower low formed here on all three major averages, the NQ, the YM, and the ES, they all agreed on that lower low. There was still SMT divergence there because we're looking at the relationship to the dollar index. The dollar index is going to give you risk on, risk off. If the dollar is going to go up, that means it's risk off. That means Forex, foreign currencies, and index futures are going to have more freedom to drop and have a hard time rallying higher. If the dollar index is moving lower, that's risk on. That means that Forex, foreign cur currencies, and index futures are going to have a very easy freedom to rally higher. And it's going to be very hard for your sell short positions to be profitable. It, it, it just won't pan out well for you. It's important to know that because majority of the traders that I have watched and observed and how they trade and what logic they use, they don't ever talk about this. They don't ever mention it. They might use Dow theory. Maybe I haven't seen any, you know, in recent years on YouTube or streaming it, but the relationship between confirmed higher highs, not, higher high, higher low market structure. I'm talking about very specific key lows that are forming. We're watching them this morning live. As they dug in and made that lower low, I was walk, I was walking you through it all. Go back and watch the live stream. You can go on my YouTube channel, click on the live tab and watch it. I can't edit it. It's all there. And the things I'm telling you and prompting you to look at, even though my chart stayed on this, you should be having another window where you're toggling to another chart when I'm prompting you to do it. Because you have to have intermarket relationships where they they have connection. And then when you have intermarket analysis brung from like a dollar index, why are we even referring to dollar? Because risk on risk off. If there's going to be a change in sentiment, usually the dollar index will start showing it to you if you see the lows forming. We were already worrying about these lows forming down here early. We thought that they were suspect because I did not see follow through on dollar index. And the dollar index failed to make a higher high. And this is where you need to write in your notes. The dollar failed to make a higher high as we made this lower low at 10, 12 a.m. So that lower low on the ES and the lower low in NASDAQ and the lower low on Dow futures was not met with a higher high in dollar. That is an SMT divergence. I call that SM, uh, index SMT divergence. Dollar index SMT divergence, rather. A, a symmetrical market, and this is for your notes as well, a symmetrical market is where if we have lower low like this, we're not talking about trend. We're talking about very specific rel relative highs and lows. We have a low and then a lower low. If that lower low is seen in NASDAQ and lower low in the Dow and a higher high in the dollar index, that's a symmetrical market. That's in a perfect world. That's exactly what you want to see. If at any time, you see one of those 
crack in the correlation that I just gave you, it's telling you there's a sentiment shift unfolding. And I walked you through it live this morning. So you have to, you have to be able to measure things real time. If you're going to be a day trader and you want to have precision and you want to be trading with an institutional mindset, these are the tools and concepts that they're employing to do it. There's no indicators here. All we're doing is referring to another asset, another instrument, and it's price delivery. The reason why this occurs, for some of you that are thinking, well, why does this even work? Because there is a shift in all of these algorithms, the dollar index runs on an algorithm. The ES runs on an algorithm. The Dow runs on an algorithm. The NASDAQ runs on an algorithm. They're, they're all running on an individual, same, but their own individual algorithm. When they're manipulated, that crack is like the signal for, all right, it's time. Now, it it's largely goes unnoticed by most of the trading community because if they all noticed it and they felt it was ad advantageous to even be paying attention to it, it would be plastered in every book. It would be in every course. Everybody would talk about it on – they're going to do it now because I'm doing it. But when you do these things and you see them studying them and you start trading with them and you've been using them for three, three decades – and know that everybody else doesn't touch on it. It's like a secret weapon. And here's the wonderful thing. It's never going to stop working. So stop worrying about it. Okay. The reason why it's never going to stop working is because the market has to signify it's time for that smart money group to get to work. That's why it's happening. You don't have to believe me. I don't care. Save your opinions because you're not convincing me. I'm out here walking it out here for, for real in front of you. I'm telling you how it's happening real time on a minute by minute basis. And I'm telling you where I'm getting the information from. So that way you can walk forward with it. Not, oh, it was cherry picked. It only worked at one time. No, you're going to see this stuff work all year long. Every year. I mean, every week, every day that I sit down with you, you're going to see these concepts unfolding in the charts. And you're going to compare and contrast how much time you've wasted looking at other things, insisting that that was the right way of doing it. This was the best way of understanding price. This is the best indicator. This is the best teacher to learn from. All those things, they're going to fall to the wayside. You're going to understand the truth about the marketplace, and I'm showing it to you. Until we got to this point here where we had that dollar index divergence, I said, okay, now I would expect it to run on the buy stops. above these highs here, and then I reached all the way back over to here. And I said, if we got through that, it would go back up to the consequent encroachment of the previous week's new week opening gap. Don't believe me? Go back and watch the live stream. It's all there. While we were down here. I said, I want to see it rip through this fair value gap. I want to see it rip through this high. And then once we got through this high, I said, now watch. This is not me going through the process of looking at classic support and resistance. This is, this is completely diametrically opposed to the logic that that is employing. I'm looking at that very candle here, this one right here. I'm going to put my cursor right over top of the candle, okay? Because I, I don't know how to highlight this. When you see me do my pre-recorded videos, I have the advantage of doing that with Camtasia, which was the screen capturing application I use. And you can get that from techsmith.com, T-E-C-H-S-M-I-T-H. Dot com, techsmith.com, and the application is Camtasia. Wonderful resource. You can record your screen with it, but I don't have a way that I know of to highlight my cursor when I'm doing these live streams using OBS. So I apologize. It may be hard for you to track my, my cursor, but it's this candle right here, this up-close candle. It's the highest up-close bullish candle before the drop down. And why that's important is it's a bullish breaker. The bullish breaker is the low here up to the high and then the lower low. So classic support resistance would say when we trade through this, this candle's high right here. Let me put a, put a line on it so that way you can see the distinctions here. And I can put this to bed once and for all. 
All right, see this line right here? That line, if it's broken like it is on this candle right there, the common consensus is if this is broken to the upside, when price comes back down to it right here on that candle, it should act as what? Resistance, broken, turn, support. Well, no. <laughs> no. What I'm doing is I'm looking inside that up close candle here. Let me move this way out of the way for a second. That green candle right here, the last upper most green candle, because I'm looking at its closing price, not this one. I'm looking at this one. It has the highest up close. It's inside of the high that's formed between this candle's low and this candle's high. I'm sorry, this candle's low and this candle's low. So a bullish breaker is a swing high that's between two lows, but the most recent low has to go lower because it's taking out sell stops. Then the market rallies higher, trades through it, and then I'm going to look for this signature in price. I'm first looking for the, the beefiest up close bodied candle. If there is a candle that's large like this one, if you're not careful, you can just say, well, that's that's the one I'm looking for. No, you got to look for where the highest closing price is in an up close candle. That's this one. That's my bullish breaker. Then you, you take that entire range from its low up to the high, encapsulate that with your rectangle, and then drag that forward. Now, at the time, I was talking about how by itself it means nothing. It just gives you the range of far, as far as how much of a retracement back down. I'm saying that, and I said this live, that it's not that you're breaking above that old high and using it as support now. I'm saying that you need to look at that low and expect price to reach down as far as that. That's still okay. But I took your attention into this little area here, which was the fair value gap, defined by this candle's high and that candle's low. That fair value gap, I said you would see the bodies stay inside that, and that's exactly what we see here. The wicks went beyond it. That's fine. What is it? What is it inside of? This fair value gap is inside of what? This breaker. So that entire range extended out in the future. Yes, we went lower. Where did the bodies stop? Right at the bottom of the fair value gap. The wicks can go through that. Remember the analogy I was teaching when you're cutting the grass in your lawn? You got to be careful not to leave those little mohawks where you didn't line up your mower correctly and you have to go back and cut them. That's what this is, leaving no mohawks. It's going to overshoot it just a little bit. That's fine. That's not lack of precision. The body stayed inside of that breaker. That's the proof of logic. That's proof of concept. That's proof that the market is absolutely being controlled. You're going to tell me that every retail trader and every person that speculated today in the S&P came together and commonly agreed that we won't let the body close outside of the scope of a breaker that some goober on YouTube called ICT created, right? <laughs> it takes more faith to believe that than to simply accept the fact that the markets are algorithmic. But okay, whatever. So the market rallies from there and trades up into the pool of liquidity over here, which is what I drew your attention to. I said I had to break at 1030 because I had to go test drive a Hellcat jailbreak edition. And I'm probably going to take delivery of it. But the buy side above here, we ended up going to that. And as it did that, I tweeted and said, there you go. Uh, 31, 36, 50 was booked. So the buy side was taken. Once we delivered that, we started consolidating. So I'm going to take this level off because I don't want you seeing it as something that's important now because it's not. We go right back to looking at what level. What is this level here? That's the low of the old or previous new week opening gap. So it's hanging around that. It rallies, trades up to what level? What is this? This consequent encroachment of the previous week's new week opening gap. The low of the week, I'm sorry, the, no, the low of the new week opening gap of the previous week. This is not this past Sunday's opening price and last Friday. It's the previous week's Sunday opening price and its previous Friday closing price. And the range between the midpoint is this level here, which is consequent encroachment. The market trades randomly right up to that level, stops, retraces, and trades back down to what? The new week opening gap, low. 
Then the market rallies up, trades right up to what? The previous week's new week opening gap. Where's the body stopping? Inside the boundary that's created by that range. Does it wick through it? Yes. Is that permissible? Yes. Is it showing a lack of precision by doing so? No. It's doing what I'm teaching you. It's, do, it's, it's doing what it's been coded to do. The market trades lower, back through the consequent encroachment, dives down below, new week opening gap. What's resting below here? Sell side. Trades back down into 41.28. Go back and look at the discussion this morning in the live session for 41.28. The market rallies back up. It's gyrating around the previous week's new week opening gap low. Rallies again up to consequent encroachment. Working around the level of what? New day opening gap. Remember the difference between 5 p.m.'s closing price and 6 p.m.'s opening price? That one tick difference? You may not see anything in here that's of importance, but I see a lot. Look at the look at the gathering around that level. And then it drops down to consequent encroachment between this level and that level. Then it rallies. Fair value gap dips down into that. And then there's expansion to the upside. Runs into 41.53 and a half. Yeah. Consolidates. We have relative equal highs now. The market drops back down. Works what level? Previous week's new week opening gap high. Attacks the buy side. Three thirty. Three o'clock. Three forty-five, right there. Between three thirty. I'm sorry, 3.15 and 3.45, last hour macro. It will run on liquidity that has not been engaged. Meaning, here's 3.15, New York local time. 3.45. That's your last hour trading, the macro. The algorithm will do a spooling. Okay, spooling. Think of it like a, um, I got questioned by uh, a few folks about this. When I say spooling, imagine you're a fishing um you're holding a fishing pole, okay? And you cast the fishing rod out into the water. When the fishing line is leaving the spool, it's just like, it's running. It's dragging out that line. That's what that's what it's going to do. It's going to run out the line, like you're, like you're standing right here. You're going to cast the, the fishing pole. And the line keeps going out. And you're aiming for to drop your, your lure into this area right above here. Because right above here is what? Buy side liquidity. So you could be a buyer trading down here at some random level. A volume and balance. Order block. Buying that at the 15 minute after 3 o'clock and expecting price to start delivering higher. And once it creates this scenario, you are entering into a buy program. A buy program is not a market maker buy model. Okay, I see a couple of students interchangeably using that. It's not that's not what's going on. A buy program is when the market goes when an algorithm starts going into buy side delivery, meaning it's going to keep booking price higher and higher. It does not matter. Listen, folks, I don't care how long you've been trading, who you know, who, what firm you worked with, you used to make the markets at so and so's, you know, crude oil option market. You're, you're not a market maker; you're a dealer. When you look at the market from the perspective of the algorithm is what's, what we're seeing here and i'm bringing it to you every day when the market starts delivering price higher it matters not how much buying pressure there is or how much selling pressure it is it's going to go there regardless of whether you want it to or not you could be bearish all you want everybody could be screaming about it on the marketplace sentiment message boards forums reddit everybody it won't matter because if the market's going to go there it's going there 
and it can do so with low volume, which blows out the whole argument about buying and selling pressure. The market rallies from here and enters a buy program. Buy program is when the market just starts booking higher prices until we get to a pool of liquidity. In this case, it would be buy side here or a premium inefficiency, which would be an example like this right here, this small little fair value gap. So the difference between this candle's low and this candle's high is a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. That's the classification of this particular fair value gap, meaning it only offered sell side. So to be repriced correctly and have an efficient fair value offered to the marketplace between this candle's low and this candle's high, it will want to reprice up to it here like it does with up close candles. The market will deliver it on up basis. So it's now offered efficiently through the scope of fair value. It is not rebalanced because it did that. That's not rebalancing, it's repricing. When it leaves this range, then it is balanced. Then it's likely to support price where it doesn't need to go back down there. So that's the only distinction I'm gonna make here. Now go back to that low. Once it enters the buy program, you know that it's likely to tra trade up into here, why? Because I already explained it this morning. We've already worked lower. I showed you where the smart money shift to bullish, why they're going to be reaching for all this buy side. Everything was explained in that live stream. Go back and listen to it. It would be wasteful for me to do it all again here. Once it starts rallying, every down close candle or series of down close candles, if there's ever a series of down close candles, you use that entire block of down close candles as one because it's delivery that you're looking at, not just simply one candle. One candle does not make a narrative. One candle doesn't make a order block. It's this change in the state of delivery that is the order block. What do I mean by that? Let's dig into this. Three down closed candles. That opening price right there. That candle's opening price, you're going to look at this, this value right here, okay? Look up here in the upper left-hand corner where I'm pointing. That's the open. That price is 4145.75. As soon, as soon as that price is traded to and one tick above it, that becomes an order block. So young men and young women, Please stop making videos pretending you're teaching order blocks because you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. This change in the state of delivery right there, once this occurs on that candle, this opening price becomes fair value. That means that the market, when it trades through it here, it's going to want to do what? Offer smart money the traders that some of you don't believe exist. And when it comes back down and touches that, they're buying it. When it trades on this candle here and trades and goes down to it again, they're buying it. Their algorithm, their algorithm, which is high frequency and it's hammering, hammering, constantly hammering the market at these price points. They're buying it here, they're buying it here, they're buying it here, and they're buying it here. Every single time we leave a down close candle, they're watching their positions move into profit. Every time that we see a new change in the state of delivery, it's offering them another opportunity to build their position and build it larger. Remember, the focus is over here. This is the draw on liquidity where the market's going to be pulled to. Why? Why should it go up there? Because there's buy side up there, buy stops, willing buyers to buy at a higher price when it's down here. Think about that. You're not taught to think like that in these books. Everybody writes these books talking about that's resistance. No, that's victims. That's new meat. That's flesh to be devoured. The, the market is the beast. It will consume the flesh that is dangling off the carcass right above these highs. That's, that's the life essence of these markets. 
It's going to where the orders are. It has no respect of your pattern. It has no respect of a, a down closed candle that you're foolishly calling an order block when you don't know what you're talking about. It's going to where the actual orders are and inefficiencies. So the market's going to seek liquidity and fair value constantly. It's always this ebb and flow between the two. It's constantly trying to facilitate the most efficient model of delivery for price. That's the, that's the function of these price engines. It's doing that. It has no awareness how many contracts are being bought or sold. It has absolutely none. It doesn't even know how many contracts are resting above that. It just knows that once it does this and it stops here and pulls away, every trader is going to do the same thing. It's called priming. Priming is doing something with the expectation that the audience, viewer, or participant will begin to expect a specific outcome. Once that's done, once that hook is sunk in, it's over. The market goes down. When this pass here occurs, traders are going to look at that and say, oh, it's going to take out that low. They want to be short. Selling, selling, selling. Smart money's buying, buying, buying. Changing the state of delivery. Buy, 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 buy. Boom. Displacement. We're taking out a short-term high right here. Now, think. I just walked you through as close as I freaking can without getting in my own personal trouble here. This becomes the 2022 model. Think. Low. Lower low. Sell side's taken. We're inside that time window between 15 minutes after 3 to 45 minutes after 3. So that closing hour, final hour of trading, you're going to see a macro run to the liquidity that has not been engaged. That's this over here. Within the context of a bullish market, which I gave you this morning. Change in the state of delivery. Buy, 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 buy. Displacement. Shift in market structure bullish. This is where I've been telling you to buy. This is where I buy. This is where I buy. That's where smart money engages. They're in early. How do you know to get in early? Because I know. I'm teaching you how to get in where it's obvious to see it. Isn't that obvious now? That's exactly what I taught you in the 2022 model. Shift in market structure. After liquidity is taken, bias is bullish. We have liquidity. Aim for it. Buy in this fair value gap. Okay. Don't trail the stop loss up real tight. I, I teach you that in the in the model. You got to get first profit before you ever roll your stop to anything considered break even or close to that. So are you stopped out here? No. You might be a little unsettled because you're new. That's normal. Market rallies, comes back into another fair value gap here, trades into it, rallies. Two down closed candles. We trade through it here, that becomes an order block. It's a change in the state of delivery. It's delivering now, buy side. The next candle opens here. What is that? It's a volume imbalance. It opens here, expected to trade back down. Just to close that gap to that opening price? No. Trade into this candle, that opening price. Trades into it, smart money, smart money will buy there. What happens after that? Rallies. It does not rally because smart money bought. It does not rally because smart money has more buying pressure. It rallies because it's rallying. It's designed and it's coded to do so. I don't give a shit who believes me. Rallies up, and we've priced rather handsomely above the relative equal highs here. Okay, so you see again another final trading day, final hour of trading macro between 315 and 345. What's actually occurring there? I know some of you are asking, like, what makes that macro? What, what's, the, what's the deal with that? It is a, it's a function that will make the most sense for some of you when you think that the market's bullish and we had a big bull day and it runs up, makes a high of the day, and then usually this time of day the market will pull off the highs and close near the high but not at the high but if you're in a time when the market's trying to press out of a consolidation which is what i outlined this morning on the daily chart 
we're in this range bound consolidation. So the market's going to start probing outside those boundaries. I tipped you off on the side it's going to reach for this morning because it had already tried multiple times to go lower and it's caught traders doing what? Selling short. Watch the live stream. It's all in my dialogue. Your focus was to look up all day, especially in the last part of the day. So here we are, we're up here. And by knowing what you're trading in, in terms of direction, and then you focus on specific times of the day where I'm teaching these macros exist, the 15 minute mark to 45 minutes after three o'clock New York local time, that macro is market on close. It means it's going to cause a price run as we get in towards the end of the day. If you do not have a clear setup and it's not obvious, you do nothing. You don't do anything and you just wait for 20 minutes to 15 minutes before four o'clock and then you'll get some kind of a five to eight, maybe sometimes 10 handle run. That's how I trade the last final hour trading. It's so systematic. It's so generic. It's so boring. But for a trader that's looking for continuity, something that repeats over and over and over again, uh, it's hard to beat it. Like it's really difficult to find something that would be easier. Even though it sounds too scientific, it sounds like there's a whole lot of conjecture here. If you've been with me for a number of months, you hear me saying the same things and you see your chart printing exactly what I taught you it's gonna do because it's coded to do that. You're not gonna convince anyone in this group that this isn't algorithmic that it's absolutely controlled because they've been witnessing they've, they've handled it they've seen it and i know it's jarring to some people that maybe work in the financial realm here in trading and, and maybe you're at a brokerage firm maybe you're at a quote-unquote bank uh, maybe you're at a trading institution okay something to that effect and you only know what they trained you to perceive price as so you're indoctrinated. I'm on the other side. I've been where you're at. I'm on the other side. I'm telling you how these markets are booking and I'm proving it daily with every single one minute candle. If it wasn't algorithmic and I didn't know what the hell I was talking about, it wouldn't work, would it? Then then I've, if it ain't that, then I figured out <laughs> the code of buying and selling pressure, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's not that. It's not that at all. And when people just simply relax and disarm themselves and just warm up to the idea that this is a benefit. If the market is rigged, which it is, there's no reason to fear that. But you should fear over trading, over leveraging, pushing a, a mythical edge that you think exists with retail stuff. Because when you make money, it has nothing to do with you doing something right with a pattern. You just happen to be on side at that time and use proper money management. The money management is what made most people profitable, not the actual trading. Because if you sit down with most retail traders, even the ones that do really well, and well means they make a lot of money, not just making their ends meet. They make a lot of money. Uh, if they're honest, they'll, be t they'll tell you that their strike rate's really low. And it sounds shocking to, to, to the average person, to a lay audience member. They're like, there's no way you're making all that money and your strike rate is that low. Surely your strike rate has to be extremely high. No. The money management does all the heavy lifting. They know how to cut losers. They know how to lose. They know how to take the losses and not go nuts about it. And they let their runs run. So they can afford to trade with a low strike rate. I'm not happy with a low strike rate. And I don't want my students to satisfy themselves with a low strike rate. I want you to know when to do certain things, when to avoid trading, when to anticipate when it's going to be hard. Because if you know when it's going to be hard, you won't be inclined to do what? Over trade, over leverage, push it when you take a loss, try to get it back real quick. You wait and it gives you peace of mind. It gives you absolute control over the trader where most of you don't have that. You're reckless. I was reckless as a 20 year old. I did all these things foolishly too. But once you know what it is you're looking for, how you're gonna engage it, what procedures and processes do you go through while doing it? And also knowing when to pull the plug. When do you turn the charts off and walk away? That's what this mentorship is. It's not 
buy here, sell here, stop here, target here, partial here. No, 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 no. I've already taught that. That's already on my YouTube channel. This is the part that none of you want to go through, but this is the part that's required for you to do it well. You can get lucky doing my stuff. You happen to be on side at that moment, but not understanding why you're on side. On side meaning that you're on the right direction of the marketplace. And if you look for certain things that I teach, invariably you might get lucky once in a while. But you want to know that you know that you know. And that's what I'm trying to teach you. I'm teaching you how to perceive price in its most opportune time and avoiding it when it's not in those conditions. You can study it, but don't touch it. It's going to hurt you. It's like that hot pan. You walked in the kitchen. You don't know how long that hot pan's been sitting there. You know, has it been cooled off for a long time? You don't know. So what do you do? You walk over and you get your hand real close to it because you're an adult. You don't want to get burned. You're going to feel, does there any weight? Or, or heat waves coming off of that because you don't want to touch and get burned. But as a child, what did you do when you came in there? Oh, look at this. Grab. Burnt. And that's what all of you are doing when you're rushing to get these funded accounts, when you're rushing to trade with live accounts, when you're even rushing into a demo. And you're fortifying toxic thinking and fear when you don't need to be fearful of trading. You don't need to be fearful of it. You need to respect the risks. But don't be fearful of being wrong. Those instances where you're wrong, that's where you're going to learn the most. But you're trying to avoid those instances, which is doing what? Deferring any real learning. Wow. Didn't think about it like that, did you? You have to grow through some adversity, some pain. And that uncertainty that you're trying to avoid, you got to press into that. It's fun once you learn. You're like, wow, I'm not afraid of that anymore. I, I, I'm, I know what I'm looking for. If it doesn't work here, it's okay. I know it's going to repeat in the future multiple times, more times than I've done it wrong here. That's the proper mindset. But it's hard to fortify that mindset in the beginning when you don't know what the hell you're doing, what you're looking for, why you're doing it. You're just trying to copy something you thought you saw somebody like myself or someone else on, on social media. This is what we do here. We're trading on fair value gaps. This is what we do here. We trade on order blocks. And you don't really understand what you're doing. So hopefully you will all take advantage of me spending time with you this year and learning how to do this properly. So that way, when we go into 2024, you will be an independently minded trader. You'll know exactly what your model is. You won't be swayed by social media influencers, me included. You won't feel the necessity to come back to my channel. You won't have to support me with ad revenue. You won't have to come back here and ask me any questions because you'll know what it is you're doing. And that's exactly my goal for all of you. So hopefully you learned something from this one. I will be back with you all again tomorrow at uh, the morning session. I'll be live streaming again. And so I'll talk to you then. Be safe. <laughs>